everyone. So um, I've been bought a new tarot deck uh, by a good friend of mine. Um, she recently went on a pilgrimage to Glastonbury and um, she spotted a tarot deck uh, that she thought I might like to start working with and it's called the Syrian Starseed Tarot. So this is a beautiful deck. Um, it's really high energy. For anyone that's got um, a connection with uh, Lemuria, Atlantis, or any of the lost civilizations, then it would be a really great deck for you to work with. Um, it really speaks to me. Um, Syrian star seed, so it's basically um, aimed at souls that may have um, come from a different star system um, in a previous incarnation. Uh, Sirius was a um, different uh, planet where um, Lemurians are rumoured to have descended from, so the great lost civilization of Lemuria, which was um, a ocean-based or water-based community that was rumoured to have um, been destroyed um, centuries ago uh, as a result of, it was through the kindness of the Lemurian people, so the aim of uh, the Lemurian people was to um, bring love and light to everyone's lives and create a heaven on earth. Uh, but sadly, because of greed and um, animosity, I guess jealousy of other societies and other civilizations, they attacked Lemuria and um, basically took advantage of the people um, and the people's kindness, and as a result, um, the uh, continent was was sunk beneath the ocean uh, so it's really quite a sad tale um, but it's rumoured that the souls that were living in Lemuria then um, took refuge in the mountains and um, in other forms so maybe as dolphins and some of them fled and ended up in places such as ancient Egypt, so the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Greeks, so other kind of earthly um, ancient civilizations that you're aware of may have uh, been a result of the fall of Lemuria. So I'm going to go through the deck um, just to kind of give you a general overview. So it's it's traditional in the sense that it's 78 cards, so it sticks with um, the kind of traditional structure of a tarot deck. Uh, it's the five suits, so which um, consists of uh, the four suits which are um, described as the minor arcana. Uh, traditionally wands, pentacles, cups and swords. But in this deck they have replaced the names so in this deck they are crystals instead of pentacles, uh, chalices instead of cups, uh, orbs instead of swords, and flames instead of wands. So obviously sticking with kind of the traditional layout, so it officially is a tarot deck, um, but um, still very different in the feel of the cards and the energy that's um, created when using them. Uh, it's also got the major arcana, so the um, cards which are uh, numbered 0 to 21, so the 22 cards which represent major life changes um, on your human path. So I'm going to go through each card uh, so you can kind of get a better view as to what the tarot deck looks like and whether it's maybe a deck you'd be interested in working with. Great little um, book as well that comes with it and um, quite good descriptions as well. So I'd recommend you read the book 
if you do want to use the cards just to kind of get a feel for the creator's intention um, and um, deeper meanings of the cards that you might not um, understand from working with more traditional decks. Okay, so let's run through the cards then. So I'm just going to grab the first 22, which is the Major Arcana, and I'll show you these. Okay, so the first card, which is traditionally the Fool, is called Starseed. So I love the fact that the image on this card is an orb falling to Earth, which is basically... Um, what a star seed is. So, a being that um, came from a different star system that's been sent to Earth to bring goodness, kindness, love, and light to this planet. Um, you've got this beautiful lotus flower that's opening up as well on the um, right hand side of the card, which is really beautiful too. Um, so you know, it, it represents a new beginning, which is what um, the card numbered zero is all about. So the, the, be the beginning of the deck, but also um, a new beginning when it is um, presented in a reading as well. So that's the first one. Second card is Indigo. Now, traditionally, this card is known, is known as the Magician, so you can see that the names are slightly different. Higher Self is the third card. So, Higher Self in traditional tarot is the High Priestess. Fourth card is Abundance, which in traditional tarot is the Empress, so creativity. The fifth card is Reason, in traditional tarot this is the Emperor. So this is about uh, practical matters, setting a foundation. Okay, the next card is Guidance. So this card is traditionally known as uh, the Hierophant or High Priest. So this is quite a spiritual or religious card where you're looking at um, your faith and belief systems. The next card is the Lovers, so that's sticking with tradition, no change in name there. Uh, the next card is the Chariot. So again, no change there with the name. I love the fact that they've got um, an Indian um, goddess uh, that's driving the chariot forward on this particular card. Next card is Strength. So again, no change there, the same as traditional tarot. Next we have Reflection, which is traditionally the Hermit, so it's all about spending time in solitude, um, journeying within, um, listening to your intuition. Next card we have is the Great Wheel, so this is normally known as the Wheel of Fortune, so similar name. Um, so not much change there. So the next card is Divine Justice. So in traditional tarot it's just known as Justice. 
I think they've added the word divine to kind of give this deck of cards a higher vibration. And I really do feel that with these cards as well. Um, so the next card is Hanging Man, which traditionally is the Hanged Man. Um, but you'll see the reflection of a man hanging upside down in a pendulum type crystal. Um, so I think that's a really lovely way of portray portraying this image. The next one is Transition. So you can see from this that um, a soul um, has left the body. So this card is replacement of the death card in traditional tarot. It's all about um, the end of a situation, a new beginning. The next card is alchemy. So this is traditionally temperance in the tarot deck. Um, so temperance is all about turning normal metal into, into gold. So it's all about abundance, prosperity, um, skill, um, making money out of something that you love doing as a hobby, um, basically having um, the ability to do anything that you want to do. Um, so it's quite um, a magical card. So I can see why they've called this one alchemy. It kind of suits that, I think. The next card is the shadow. So in traditional tarot, this is known as the devil card. So I think this is quite a good description for, for this particular card because it is kind of looking at the shadow side of yourself. Um, so um, the devil card traditionally is about materialism, um, lust and it can be about unbreakable bonds um so marriage um but um it's also about um feeling oppressed feeling held back um in other decks it's called the ego so it's the shadow self that voice in your head that's telling you you can't do something you're not good enough so i can see why they've called it the shadow i think it's a good a good name The next card is the tower, so again, traditional tarot, uh, it's got the same name, so no change there. Still the image of the burning tower with the lightning bolt in the background. Next card is the star, so this one remains unchanged as well. next card is Luna. So this is traditionally about the moon. So uh, the moon is all about um, w walking a path and not knowing um, where you're headed. Uh, the next card is Solar Deity, which is traditionally the Sun. So again, similar, um, but different in the sense that um, it's kind of named after a figure rather than the actual Sun, which is interesting. Interesting concept. Next card is Karma. So karma replaces judgment in traditional tarot. So it's um, a situation you cannot ignore, an opportunity that's presented that could be life changing. And the last card is ascension. So in traditional tarot, this card is known as the world. Um, so the completion of a cycle, the fixed signs of the zodiac, Taurus, Scorpio, Leo and Aquarius.
Okay, so that's the major arcana. Next we have the crystals deck. So with the crystals deck, again, you've got um, your 10 standard cards. So ace to 10, but then you've got your four court cards as well. So we'll, we'll go through these. I'll just show you each one of these. So crystals is replacing pentacles. really love this next card with the Glastonbury tour in the background. Actually this one's got the tour on as well. So um, real connection to Avalon here as well which is interesting. So again um, Avalon is rumoured to have connections to uh, Sirius as well. Uh, this is the last of the 10 normal um, cards and then we go on to the court cards so we've got seeker of crystals which would traditionally be page of pentacles adept of crystals which would normally be knight of pentacles Sage of Crystals, which would normally be Queen of Pentacles. And Master of Crystals, which would normally be King of Pentacles. Okay, so that's the Crystal Suit. Um, so let's go on to Chalices next. So here we go. So these replace cups, but you can see they're very similar. So the cup suit being about relationships and emotions. This one. So that's the 10. So going on to the court cards. So again, Seeker replacing a page of cups. Adept instead of Knight of Cups. Sage instead of Queen of Cups. And Master instead of King of Cups. Okay, next we have Orbs. So Orbs are um, the placement of Swords. I actually really love the way that Orbs have been used to represent the Swords deck. So normally Swords are about challenges. So in traditional tarot, the Swords images can be quite um, Impressive to look at at times, uh, whereas I feel like the orbs kind of bring a bit more light um, to this particular tarot deck. So 
you can definitely feel the difference with this particular suit so sticking with tradition in the sense that um, you've got the dramatic skies in the background on these cards which kind of would suggest that the sword suit or in this case orbs kind of reflect the sort of more challenges and the struggles in life um, but with with tarot there is a real misunderstanding that you know the the cards that are a little bit more um, darker should we say are something to be feared of and that's not the case in my experience at all and that's why I love doing what I do I'm trying to kind of bring um, a different perspective to reading cards and I know that there's um, years of mysticism and fear associated with tarot but it really isn't to be feared it's to be embraced it can bring you direction and guidance on your life path it can bring you hope it can bring you positivity when you most need it so I believe it should be used for good and that's obviously my intention to use it for good to encourage healing within you so that's the 10 so again court cards it's a seeker of orbs page of swords traditionally adept of orbs traditionally knight of swords sage of orbs traditionally queen of swords and master of orbs traditionally king of swords okay so we're on to the last seat which is flames um so that's to replace the ones deck so flames are traditionally about um, action positivity creativity um work career business enterprise Do you love the ones deck and you can really see how the elements fit in with these cards as well uh, so the four elements of fire which is obviously this this suit here earth which is the crystals water which is um, the chalices and air which is the orbs so they really do reflect nicely because obviously orbs are seen in the air so that makes perfect sense and of course if you're into your astrology as well the suits can be associated with the signs of the zodiac so fire signs are Aries, Leo and Sagittarius um, air signs are Aquarius, Gemini and Libra Earth signs are Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn and the water signs are Pisces, Cancer and Scorpio. So court cards again, we have Seeker of Flames. So page of wands traditionally this would be. Adept of flames, traditionally knight of wands. Sage of flames, which is traditionally queen of wands. And I love this one. Uh, the master of flames, Native American gentleman here. Um, which would be King of Wands. So that concludes the deck. Just also wanted to show you the uh, back of the cards as well. It's really lovely design. Um, you can see the sacred geometry, the pyramid shape there as well. So that concludes the deck. Um, the deck is by Patricia, Corey and Alyssa Bartha. I believe this particular deck um, 
was bought from Labyrinth in Glastonbury for £15. Um, just reading the back here, it says www.northatlanticbooks.com So it might be that you can also source them via that website. Um, on the back here it says US dollars um, $29.95 and Canadian dollars $35. Um, so it just kind of gives you an idea on price. I have to say for the price that was paid for these cards, I just think they're well worth the money. Um, I've bought decks that are a lot more expensive and aren't as effective as this deck. Um, again, I really love the energy. It's really high vibration, really positive, and that's what I'm about, positivity. Um, so um, if you feel a connection with this deck, then definitely don't hesitate in um, purchasing it for yourself, especially if you feel a soul connection with this particular one. Um, like I say, if you are um, someone that associates with the word of star seed, star person, um, star child, then this is definitely a deck you should consider adding to your collection. Um, so with that, I'm going to bid you good night um, and I will see you very soon. Thank you. Take care. Bye.